Hello, hello folks, how are you? I'm coming here to you from Tulum, Mexico, where I have been here with a family over the past few days, having a great time. Once in a while, it's good to be able to just have a vacation versus traveling only for business. So here I've been doing a little bit of snorkeling, swimming, and uh, getting into some cave diving and cave snorkeling and so on. It's just been a wonderful trip and I would highly recommend visiting Tulum, Mexico with the family. So it's been awesome. So of course, not being able to just sit still, I, on the way coming, I saw a uh, exchange on Facebook that I figured I would just kind of comment on because I kind of got involved and I left a message on there and the question was about biceramic material that was used, sealer that was used to do vertical condensation. I kind of commented that it's fine as long as you are doing, actually they used warm hydraulic condensation, which still is kind of um, uh, fine in terms of uh, condensing a little bit more. They got a perch if you guys recall, there was the normal hydraulic condensation, which is some people consider to call a uh, single cone, except that I always have uh, kind of uh, gone against the narrative because it's not usually a single cone if you have excessive amount of space on the side you can put additional cones in there so it's not a single cone because that, that designates that it only should use one cone whereas hydraulic condensation is just the idea of filling space with cones without actually having any condensers or spreaders on the side of them such as lateral or vertical hydraulic condensation is essentially just uh, condensing down the top five millimeter of the top of the gutta percha with heat and then backfilling it or placing a barrier or you know, any Kind of a material to seal it but um issue that i'm trying to talk about here is the fact that if you're going to use bioceramic cements that are going to be polymer based and especially if the polymer is water soluble or are going to have a low concentration of calcium silicate in them so that you don't really get a proper hydration and precipitation reaction you're not going to have long-term stability of the cement and they kind of behave fairly closely to what are epoxy cements as well as incoxidational cements kind of reacted, except that they are going to be clearly a little bit more biocompatible than the resins and ZOEs. However, they don't give you the advantages of what originally was a pure biceramic, such as BC sealer or actual pure MTA, the fact that they follow a hydration precipitation reaction. So what you end up getting is you end up getting polymerization shrinkage as well as uh, solubility of some of these polymers because they have to be hydrophilic after all, because otherwise it won't work with the biceramic over time and you end up having uh, any area where the biceramic is going to pool, it's going to get washed out. So they don't work with hydraulic condensation as single cone, but they would work just fine with using warm vertical condensation or lateral condensation, because these would be obviously better than the previous generation of sealers, such as ZOE and uh, epoxy resins, but they won't be good enough such as a pure biceramic to be used along with hydraulic condensation or single cone because in hydraulic condensation single cone you do rely on large areas of space in the root canal to be filled with sealer alone and you end up having pooling and the reason why we couldn't do that previously with ZOE and uh, polymer based cements was because of the polymerization shrinkage and the old uh, cements used to end up having the same issue of polymerization shrinkage or setting shrinkage that prevented them from being used with the original single cone that's why the original single cone technique failed miserably was because of the fact that pooling of large areas of cement with ZOE would result into shrinkage and washout over time. So long-term stability has not been established with any of these new generation of biceramics that are not pure biceramics. And by pure, I mean that they follow the uh, hydration precipitation reaction, have a high calcium silicate content and do not contain any type of uh, polymer-based reactions for setting, which is going to cause polymerization shrinkage. Now, I haven't really meant to comment on these things in the past. The only reason I did that is because of this uh, case that came up, as well as uh, later on, some of the people that saw my co comment shared some cases with me. And as you can see here, this case that was uh, shared with me shows that this particular molar was uh, filled with uh, hydraulic condensation using the um, a new biceramic iron. So this was the H plus BC. The H plus BC, as you can see, did wash out over time when the patient came back in for a recall visit, which is something you can't really have with a pure biceramic if you're using with hydraulic condensation. Now, this kind of AH plus BC is kind of reacting in the same way as the conventional AH plus, which was also a polymer-based reaction, then not want to be able to use 
use this with hydraulic compensation or single cone technique. Now, as I said before, previously I hadn't mentioned this uh, in the past because I didn't want to, as you all know, I have had a, a hand in developing the Endo Sequence BC Cedar line of products, so I didn't want that to kind of come in as a bias, and that's why I'm kind of uh, explaining that to you. But in reality, I mean, chemistry is chemistry, and the prediction of what's going to happen in the future is based on this kind of chemistry, and I just wanted to share that with you. I had a conversation with Dr. Kosh also uh, over at the Greater New York Dental Meeting on this conversation. Maybe I'll share that at the end. The bottom line here is that um, you just want to make sure that you read the material safety data sheet of the bioceramic that you use and to make sure that if you are using a bioceramic that has polymers or has a very low concentration of calcium silicate, then you do want to use it with the conventional condensation techniques. Keep, keep in mind, I'm not saying that these types of bioceramics are poor and they should not be used. I'm just saying that they should not be used with hydraulic condensation on a single cone because it relies on a, a wide type of a, a sealer interface or a, areas where there's going to be pooling and you have to rely on this material to seal adequately in the long run, which you can't with the polymer-based materials, especially hydrophilic po polymer-based materials. Hydrophilic polymer-based materials, and I would urge anybody doing research out there uh, watching this to kind of look at these uh, bioceramics that have that are polymer-based, uh, water, water-soluble polymer-based, and to kind of try to make them set in a acidic environment, and you will see that they will actually wash out because the wa water-soluble material polymer will actually dissolve in acidic environment and that will release all of the uh, components of the, the sealer. So I can go into more detail on this. If you guys are interested in, in doing that, let me know. Again, as I said, I previously didn't want to really get into it because of the fact that, uh, you know, I have, I'm somewhat biased on this side uh, with the endosequence BC sealer, but I do feel like the actual researchers out there should be aware of this and do research on this. I've seen some other research being published, for example, showing the ANSI standards of the sealers to be similar, except that the polymer-based materials go through polymerization shrinkage. The problem is the ANSI standards require the kind of definition of shrinkage after setting, not during setting, which is kind of ironic and, and to be honest, incorrect, but it is what it is right now. So keep in mind that, that there are is going to be, during the setting, more polymerization and shrinkage with polymer-based materials. Alrighty guys, so that's it. I'm just gonna go back and have some fun here in Cancun and uh, in Tulum area um, in Mexico. And uh, I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. And again, don't forget to comment below and tell me what you think. And I will be able to maybe make another video with more detail discussing these uh, stuff. Alright guys, see you.